Hi, I'm Damon Spurgeon with Outside Again Adventures TV Online. Today I'm fishing at Montauk State Park in the Missouri Ozark. I'm going to teach you how to catch trout on a fly rod. The headwaters of the nationally renowned Current River begin in the boundaries of Montauk State Park in the Missouri Ozarks. Montauk is one of four trout parks in the state which offers superb daily put and take trout fishing. Damon Spurgeon is Outside Again Adventure TV Online's fly fishing expert, and Damon knows how to get it done. I'd like to take a couple minutes just to kind of explain how I'm fishing and kind of where we're at in the circumstances in which we've got here. Uh, I guess it was about two weeks ago, there was some pretty serious flooding all across the state of Missouri. Um, their holding tanks, which you can see up here, are directly behind us, all flooded. So basically, it kind of caught everybody by surprise. Um, when that happened, a lot of fish got into the stream. You can see there's literally thousands of trout in front of me, all around my feet, everything. Um, with that being said, what I'm using right now is probably a size 2 woolly bugger. Um, it's olive in color with a copper wrap. And whenever I brought this fish in, I just wanted to uh, take the time because as you can see here, this woolly bugger is in the bottom of this trout's mouth. And this is a male you can see with the start of the hook jaw here. And basically, more times than not, when woolly bugger fishing, you'll miss more fish than you'll actually catch. And with that being said is you have to think about, from the lure's perspective, you're working that lure back to you. And when that's done, if the fish comes at it from the side, comes at it any other way except behind it, or horizontally, I guess, so to speak, this hook will find the bottom of its mouth more so than the side. Because when you set the hook, you're directly north-south instead of east-west. East-west, primarily, you'll, you'll miss a lot of the fish. So I just wanted to take a brief minute and show that. Damon began fishing about 10 a.m. in a pool that was literally choked with rainbow trout. His greatest challenge was to get through the small fish and try to pick up some that were a little bit bigger. After catching dozens and dozens of rainbow trout, Damon decided to move downstream and scout for larger fish. Not only did Damon immediately find some larger fish, but he also found a stretch of stream that he had all to himself. Even with his extensive fly fishing experience, Damon readily admitted that this was a fly fisherman's dream come true. With a few of Damon's fly fishing tips under the belt, any fly fisherman could catch trout at Montauk. Right, guys basically what I'm doing right now is throwing probably a it's like a 14 bead head scud tan in color and I've got probably a four out egg sinker roughly there's no exact science I would say six to eight inches is probably preferable depending on the water this is relatively fast moving some would call it lazy but I would say you know with the depth that it has Depending on where the fish are, obviously more weight, deeper the fish. If they're intermediate like they are now, um, four out's probably your best bet with a lighter fly. Uh, and then work it. Continue to mend your line back upstream. Watch the pattern of your fly. Know your runs before you even make a cast. Once you have those runs spotted, cast up above naturally. Let it work its way back down. By mending that line, it allows that fly to roll to shimmy, call it what you will, but it's a more natural float and you'll tend to catch one. What 
what I'm doing right now is the same concept that we talked about earlier in the same chute, found my runs. There's a lot of fish that are here next to the bank, but the problem with that is, is the water tends to be slower moving. And with that, the, the fish that you kind of want to weed through, so to speak, are going to be next to the bank. So in order to get to the good fish, primarily they're going to be lower in your current breaks. And as you can see here, our main run is, like I said, close to the bank here. What I'm doing is casting up, and again, like we talked about earlier, the men's back upstream that allows that fly, our scud, to float naturally. And there's, there's rocks in there. Well, naturally, what that current's going to do is it's going to push that scud up over. Once that current break over that rock, that scud's going to fall in. Well, the fish don't want to stay in the main current the whole time, so they're going to lay in behind, under, all around any sort of current break. So when that scud rolls by, I'll piece, think of it like a pie. I'm going to piece these runs in order. I'm going to work the top first, middle, then to my left, the furthest down, and then I'll continue to move. So I'm going to keep doing this all the way down until this runs out or water gets too shallow or so on and so forth. Damon is living proof that his method work. Fly fishing can be intimidating for most. Now with that being said, intimidating I mean a lot of times it's the cost, it's the, the variety of products, lack of knowledge, so on and so forth. So it's something that a lot of people would like to do, um, enjoy the concept. Living in Missouri, there's a lot of opportunity as far as you could walk out your front door pretty well all across the state and pick up a fly rod and go. And by that, well, I've got another fish on here. Um, by that being, fly fishing can't and shouldn't be automatically constricted to the type of fish being trout. The main way I learned was um, growing up on a farm, there was a lot of small farm ponds and taking a whatever fly I could find, whatever size, and going to those farm ponds and working on a cast, or, and mainly that came from watching movies like A River Runs Through It, uh, reading magazines, watching somebody at a trout park. That's how I learned many of the concepts that I use now. Uh, for beginning fly fishermen, it's, it shouldn't be an issue with gear, it shouldn't be an issue with, it's, Time's always going to be an issue because people's, you know, it's it's different for everybody. But basically, it should, you don't need a certain type of waders. You don't need a certain type of fly rod. The line can kind of be different, but those are questions you can ask. Ask anybody at a stream or or call a dealer, stop in a fly shop, and those questions would be happy to be answered. Um, it's it's a different type of fishing. There's a lot of science behind it. Uh, you could stop at every riffle, um, pick up any rock, look underneath it, see what's there. See what's crawling around in the water because the stream's never going to lie to you. It's going to tell you what the fish are eating outside of color. Um, there's a lot of hot topics on what the best trout lure is. Well, with fly fishing, that depends on the time of year. It depends on your location. It depends on what's hatching. What's, what's going on above water is forgotten what's going on underneath the water. Your fishing period is a lot longer with what's going on underneath the water. You have your hatchers, emergers. There's a lot of different patterns that can be fished other than just dry fly fishing. Early in the year, like today, um, you can catch fish on, on some dry flies, but depending on later in the summer, that's whenever you'll really start picking that stuff up. Fish get more finicky things like that. You'll match the hatch, so to speak, what's on top of the water you want to throw. It's not going to necessarily be an all-day thing, but it will definitely be some point evenings, early mornings, stuff like that. So in the meantime, don't let it intimidate you. Intimidate you. Ask the questions. Get out there and just learn. Your mistakes are your best learning points. So anytime you hook a tree, trust me, you can ask anybody that's ever picked up a fly rod. If you don't hook a tree at least once or twice a day, then you're not flying. Damon recommends that newcomers to fly fishing try a five weight, nine foot rod.
Damon has a little visitor, but he's not giving up this good spot to any intruder. Damon's got his eye on another good fish, and he keeps working the drift and changing flies until he hooks up. to talk about one of the easiest patterns and easiest ways to fly fish, especially for beginners in the Missouri Ozarks. Um, I've got a variety of what's called the woolly bugger. They come in all colors, the bead head, weighted, unweighted. So I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the different types that I've used today. I'm gonna to talk about the unweighted woolly worm I call this one. It's not necessarily a woolly bugger. Um, when the bagworms are tight and thick, you'll see them in the trees. That is a perfect time to use this pattern. It tends to work great weighted or unweighted. A lot of times if you can find a good still hole, it's perfect for that. Light stripping, things of that nature. The next one I'm going to talk about is the beadhead woolly bug. This one here is a lot bigger in size. Um, olive in color with a copper wrap. You see the sparkles in the tail. Basically, marabou comes out the tail rather than just yarn on the unweighted. There's another one, smaller in size, and you can see the difference with the bead head. Basically, these are perfect patterns for beginning fly fishermen, especially here in the Missouri Ozarks. It can be used all year long. Uh, you can think it, you know, you're using it to look like one thing, but the fish will ultimately decide. All right, the next fly I'd like to talk about is another one that can be used all year long. They tend to be in the, the Missouri waterways 365 days a year, and it is the freshwater scud. You'll hear a lot of varieties, sow bugs, things like that. They all mainly represent the same thing, um, freshwater shrimp, glow bugs, things like that. In this box here, you can see mainly from here down a variety of scuds. It tends to be like today in the current river, olive and tan really, really seem to work well. Mainly whenever you turn over rocks or you, you take your foot in a rocky area in the river and kind of move it around, you can see a lot of them or pick up moss and look in the moss. You can see a lot of scuds. And once you see the fly and then you do something like that, you can relate. The best way to use these is, again, like I said earlier, split shot, usually a four aught, six, eight inches up. Find a riffle, you can sight fish with them, like these hot pink ones work perfect for that. And make your run. Usually you're, you don't have near as much line out. You can work above the fish, so west to east or east to west, however way you're coordinated in the water. And on doing that, watch the fish. See how the fish is statured, see if he's, you can usually tell if the fish is hungry. Watch him in direct correlation with your fly. When your fly gets near him, he will kind of get a little bit fidgety. He might turn to his right or his left. And just watch the fish in coordination with your fly and you should tear him up. Damon Spurgeon is always on the hunt for fish. And recently, he found the mother load at Montauk State Park where recent floods washed thousands of fish out of the hatcheries and into the stream. Fishing should be good for some time to come. If you find yourself in the Missouri Ozarks, Please, it's worth the stop. Stop by J. Cook Fly Rods in Salem, Missouri. It's a top flight product and you will not be If Damon is not fly fishing, he's thinking about that next huge trout he's going to catch. Watch for future episodes of Fly Fishing with Damon on Outside Again Adventure TV online.